Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Nerd 2. I'm Bo Oliver, joined today by Aaron, the Nerd 2 monkey, and we are back to preview another episode of Westworld Season 3, Episode 4, this time The Mother of Exiles. Another interesting title, but I'm sure we'll talk about that on the review. It's actually a nickname for the Statue of Liberty, if you didn't know that. Is it? Yeah. Oh, cool. According to Google. But yeah, no, an interesting title. And the first shot, uh, we see this foundation. Oh, the Statue of Liberty. That's like a sign for freedom. I think I'm on to something here. Yeah. Kind of a melting pot. You know, bring me your tired, your poor. Ah, so Dolores is going to destroy the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> yeah, right. So basically, there's a giant host hidden inside of the Statue of Liberty that she's going to activate like a titan. These previews are easy. All these theory videos. And we're getting our first look at William. We haven't seen William so far in the first three episodes. And as we know, at the end of season two, he wasn't doing so well, killed his daughter, and uh, he was kind of on the mend there a bit. <laughs> yeah, not ideal if you ask me. He seems to be uh, still dealing with that. The whole kind of breakdown he had towards the end of season two, where he started questioning if he was a host or not, seems to be still taking effect in the real world. And yeah, I think with the, the lines in this trailer spoken by Dolores telling somebody, maybe it's directed at William, it could be directed at somebody else, that you don't even know yourself. So these sequences could be William still kind of struggling with his own identity, or it could take place in that far future timeline, where he's kind of being run through those tests by his host daughter, um, Emily, that we saw on that. We're assuming it's the far future, the distant future. Maybe that's just him again. Maybe, I, I don't know, that house kind of looked like the house where his wife had killed herself in season two when we went back to those flashbacks. So that might be host William once again trying to relive that. He turns around and he says, I, I know who I am. So he was struggling with it just as a human and a host. So <laughs> in both timelines, he was kind of having an existential crisis. He doesn't look well. Yeah, and we see from the original Season 3 trailer where Dolores, he seems to be like in a futuristic jail or it's definitely a rich person's jail being a titan of industry, self-described. But well, well, you have to wonder if there are going to be any repercussions for what he did, if they were able to kind of sweep it under the rug, cover it up, that he did murder his own daughter, or if they're going to have him arrested. If he does have other family out there that says, hey, what the hell happened to Emily, and he cracks, maybe he feels guilty. Maybe he feels like he needs to go to a mental hospital to recover. It does seem the two different settings from the season three trailer and this preview trailer that it could be taking place right after maybe the events of Westworld season two and they could play with time a little. Kind of like last episode, not something where we've seen in the past where it's like, oh shit, this is happening then and this is now, but going back and telling the story up until this point. William has had so many conflicting emotions because in season two it felt like he was becoming more sympathetic towards the hosts after what he does for Lawrence, the way that he saved Lawrence, his wife, and his and his child. But you know, the whole thing with William, you wonder if that end of season two was just his breaking point and he's gone completely mad now. Because his whole idea was, can I kill a, a mother and a child? And then he inadvertently killed his own wife and kid. So we'll see. I don't know. But that eyes wide shut party, that interests me. I wonder if we're going to get like, a, not necessarily a young William, but a prequel flashback with William and Sarek. Yeah, we talked about how we would love to see that interaction. You got to assume that William, Sarek, Ford have had interactions in the past. William being one of the heads of Delos, Ford being the innovator that he is, and Sarek, Insight, these titans of industry. You have to assume they have come together at one point or another. Right, and William is very famous because he's noticed in season one by just random park guests where they thank him for his contributions, and where Sarek is kind of just a ghost. But you would think if if anybody is going to know who he is, it would be William or James Delos. James Delos may have had some information on him. And it looks like we have a shot in this trailer that could be a young Sarek, because this shot here, we see a kind of mushroom cloud in the distance at a young boy overlooking it. If you go back to the trailer where they covered the many divergences throughout the show's timeline, one of the divergences is 2025, a nuclear accident in Paris. And we can assume that Sarek is French because he's played by a French actor, but maybe this is the moment where he's kind of in inspired to get into the world of AI, to change the world, to put everybody on a path so that accidents are manufactured. Accidents like this won't happen. Yeah, you could assume maybe his family got affected by it or something happened where... Core drive. Yeah, it just influenced him to want to do better. And somewhere along the road, like with, I guess, a lot of people, is once you obtain this power that's influential the way Rehoboam is and you kind of can mold and change the way you want to achieve your goal. He still might want to make the world a better place but doing so by putting people on loops we see with Caleb how that could affect somebody and probably millions of other people in this world. Yeah there are a lot of interesting ideas as to the identity of Sarek. People have 
theorized that maybe he is um, a form of artificial intelligence that Rehoboam created uh, an avatar for him to walk around and kind of give commands. And at the end of the day, it would be Dolores battling against another AI for supremacy. But uh, we also see Maeve in this trailer, and we know that Maeve and Sarek, we don't know if they necessarily struck a deal, but I think we can assume that they did. And the title could apply to Maeve. And instead of Dolores, somebody who's a bit more harsh, a bit more or less forgiving, Maeve might be the mother of exiles. Kind of reluctant to take on that role. So, you know, I always say it, the George Washington. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely interesting to see what kind of happened after that conversation with Maeve and Sarek, where you see he was able to control Maeve and freeze her motor functions, something that hasn't happened to Maeve in a while. AI. What? He's AI. Go ahead. <laughs> And we also know Maeve and Dolores' conflicting ideologies when it comes to humanity or what to do. Where Well, you also mentioned him, her teaming up with the man in black, possibly, because they may have the same goal here. Yeah. The uh, Talk about a weird partnership. Yes, they have had history in the past, so it'll be interesting to see what all these dynamics play out, because there's a lot of intriguing things at play here with a lot of characters that differing, I guess, ideologies or what they want in this world. Yeah, because you would think that the man in black wanted to destroy the forge at the end of season two, and now Sarek wants that information. He wants that wherever it is floating out there. He wants that key from Dolores. So that would put them at odds. You have to wonder, you know, what are what Sarek's endgame? The man in black, I've always said this, he's, he's obviously a very fucked up character, but his motivations are always pretty simple. He's very straightforward. I'm going to save the fucking world. Yeah, he says that in the trailer. Season one, I think he just wanted them to come to life so that they can almost kill him. And he's just a sicko. (laughs) That's what he is. It could be like a circle. There's been a theme of circles within this season with the Rehoboam timeline. But just in the sense of William wants to stop Dolores. Dolores wants to stop Maeve. Like, it just goes all around. And no matter where, you might align with one thing with somebody. So William and Sarek might want to stop Dolores. But William's idea of saving the fucking world could be different than Sarek's. It's the meme of the office when they're all shooting at each other or the Pirates of the Caribbean, it can switch in an instant. Once you've achieved your goal and then somebody else wants to go a bit further, it's, well, now I have to turn on them. Because like you said, it's everybody wants this. Some people want it to use it. They want it to destroy it. Bernard just wants to make sure that Dolores doesn't commit genocide. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there are a lot of different motivations, and I think it's shaping up to be a very fun season so far just because of all the wild cards that we have here. There seems to be a gunfight in this trailer, too. It's, I assume it's in Asia. There's some lettering in the background. Uh, and we see Dolores. She was in China in the first episode, that first scene, when she kills that man who has all the information with insight and visit her at the park. And also, I think uh, the park is off the coast somewhere over there. So maybe Bernard and Ashley, this is where they come in and they see some trouble here. Yeah, you have to think that the park is still going to come into play, like you said. And there's obviously facilities that Delos may have on the different islands or different countries in Asia. It looks like Maeve is in a similar setting. I don't know if Maeve is traveling back the park to learn more about what happened with the forge, but it seems unnecessary because Bernard and Ashley kind of already did that. Well, there's a a flicker in her eyes. Uh, Maybe a fire could be gunshots, so Mm -hmm. she could be a part of that sequence. You think we get any uh, indication on who Hale is this episode? I've read so many different ideas, and I think the one that I'm going to settle on for my prediction is that it's a young Dolores. It's a Dolores that truly hasn't gained free will and consciousness. and Because there are so many different candidates that you could put in there, but certain lines kind of contradict a, a specific character being in there that is spoken, or just actions, timelines. It, it's messy. So I like the idea of she put herself in Charlotte Hale and is trying to reawaken a new Dolores. Well, a line that nobody knows me better than you, I think, that's Teddy, Peter Abernathy, or young Dolores. Because there are a lot of interesting ideas. Clementine, Angela, Emily, even Charlotte. Maybe she created another Charlotte and put it in the host body. But that line right there, it's who would she have that relationship with? Yeah, and I like the idea of kind of Wyatt and Dolores separating as two physical entities. That's so weird to me that maybe, I don't know, she's or she's just trying to create a new Wyatt. A young or William, too. A, right, yeah. Be. I've, I've seen people say that as well. Even a young Teddy, you know, young Teddy who's, like we saw, Teddy was so overwhelmed by Dolores making him a killer that he just killed himself. And we saw Charlotte, whoever is inside Charlotte, kind of struggling with that as well until she had a clear target to kill. Then she realized her true potential as a host. So I, I don't know. There are a lot of ideas out there. It's one of those things where I wish they kind of didn't make it a mystery because I don't think it was necessary. Well, it's also hard, too, because there's really there's some things there that you can base a theory around or a, a guess. But every possible scenario, I seem to maybe start to hypothesize on who is in Charlotte Hale's body. There's as many connections there are to be like, oh, that makes sense. There are just as many like, no, wait, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, there's just as many like contradictions that just wouldn't make sense. 
I saw one before where I started freaking out where it's like, oh, it's Caleb. She killed Caleb and created a host Caleb and put in it's like that. That doesn't make sense. I liked Emily. I'm like, oh, it could be Emily. But like they never had any interaction together. <laughs> right. Yeah. Could just be Bob. Bob, the host that Dolores was good friends with. It's the second father she got. <laughs> you know what? That guy didn't get a lot of a lot of play. It's like, oh, you know what? I grabbed Peter Abernathy, but I forgot they switched. God damn it. I love when the stepdad and the dad become like one super dad. You know, they're interchangeable. It's great. Great what for it? the kid. Is that Daddy's Home? Yeah, describe, at the end of Daddy's Home, you get like that. Home. Yeah, yeah, Will Farrell and Wahlberg. They're both raising the kids. Well, who comes in too? Who's the Mel Gibson? Oh, let's not. Oh, come on. <laughs> hey, guys. Thank you for watching this video. And, of course, we would like to thank our Patreon supporters. Without you guys, Nerd Soup wouldn't be Nerd Soup. Seriously, your support is what keeps the fridge full. So thank you once again for your support. If you are interested in supporting Nerd Soup through Patreon, visit our page and check out the different rewards we offer to our fans. If not, then no problem. We appreciate anyone who takes time from their day to watch our videos. So thank you to each and every one of you out there watching, and remember to like and share this video. And hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like it. Or don't. <laughs>